so good to be with you again this week. <laughs> God is just so good and wonderful. I want to just sh uh, share this week, continuing in the armor of God, but a little bit more emphasis on the word of God being the sword of the spirit. But firstly, I just wanted to say, you know, God is so good so amazing he wants the holy spirit just wants such freedom for us you know we just minister to a young man who had been bound by demonic visitations um, was robbing him of of his joy he was having to seek uh, help in other places but he came to us and we were able to pray over him and as we ministered the word of god the from the bible biblical new covenant truths about his identity about what christ had done for him on the cross about sins forgiven about new abundant eternal life now he literally in front of us started manifesting demons fell down started twitching and jerking <laughs> and uh, we were able to discern there were certain demons that needed to come out of him and uh, we prayed over him and it was so beautiful to see the freedom come in and the power of the word of god the power of biblical truth applied in the spirit you know uh, 2 corinthians chapter 3 says we are ministers of a new covenant not of the old letter of the law but of the letter of the spirit that brings life see the the bible can be used to bring condemnation guilt and death or it can be used to reveal Jesus and the life, the abundant life that he wants to bring. And this young man experienced that. And it, towards the end, the joy of the Lord, the Holy Spirit started filling him. There were some uh, um, powerful words of knowledge over his life, accurate words of knowledge, which really confirmed a calling on his life to, to be a missionary um, in certain areas. And it was wonderful to see the Holy Spirit touching him. And the joy of the Lord came upon him. <laughs> you know, we need joy these days. You know, the unique anointing of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1, it says, God set Jesus above everyone else by anointing him with the oil of joy. And we know that's a fulfillment of uh, um, Psalm 61. The oil of gladness, the oil of joy. We are called to be joyful because we are in Christ. And the joy of the Lord is our strength, as it says in Nehemiah, Nehemiah 8.10. So guys, joy is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to us. You know, it's a miserable world out there. People want to see genuinely joyful people with abundant life of Christ, the living waters of the Holy Spirit flowing out of them. We experienced that this morning and we brought somebody into freedom. So I want to just say it, it relates very directly to what I want to speak on today, which is, again, part of the armor of God, the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. Now, I spoke on this last week, but I just felt we need to look more at how to use the sword of the Spirit. Specifically, when it talks about the Word of God, how to use the Scriptures, how to use the Bible correctly in a way that it brings life, because it can bring death. You know, the, the, the 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says, we have not been given a ministry that brings death, like the old covenant, the law, but we have the ministry of the Spirit in which we apply the Word of God, the biblical truths about Jesus and biblical truths about His kingdom and the new covenant in a way that they bring life. You see, the Bible can be used to bring condemnation and death, religious, in a religious, judgmental way, or it can be used to bring the truths about Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross. It brings life and joy to those who heard it. You know, this young man heard the truth today, biblical truth, especially when I re uh, read um, Galatians 2.20 over him. He's been crucified with Christ, no longer lives, but Christ lives in him. He just literally, the demon started manifesting at that truth because Satan hates the word of God, hates scripture when they're applied as a now word, a rumor word, when Logos truths are applied in the now to bring freedom. So I just want to share a few truths with you today um, about how to use the scripture. Now, this isn't academia. This isn't theology. This is just practical things that we've seen over the years. I love the Bible. I read the Bible every day. I'm steeped in the word of God. But it's the word and the spirit that comes to set people free. And we need to get into the Word of God, especially into the understanding of the New Covenant, the New Testament of God. 
So I'm going to share five truths with you today. I hope I'm going to get through it. I might split this into two parts, depending on how the time goes. Time goes. And uh, one is um, one of the truths is the Bible is about Christ. So it, they all start with C. You know, sometimes it's helpful to have like these little little secrets of remembering. So the scriptures are about Christ. The script number two, the scriptures are about the cross. They all scriptures are pointing to Christ and the cross, old and new. All about Jesus and the cross. Scriptures need to be read in the understanding of the covenant that you're reading out of. We also need to read the scriptures in context. Okay, and we also need to understand what kind of consciousness is the scriptures bringing us into. Now, I'm going to explain each of those five points. But this, you know, in the old days, swords were wielded. And yes, it's the sword of the spirit, but it's also the word of God. And knights had to train up younger men and women in how to fight with a sword. So, you know, I've been through a few things in my life. <laughs> I've applied the word of God in, in, in amazingly dangerous situations against evil, in social justice situations. I've applied the Word of God. I've seen how it works. I've seen the power of the Word of God. And that's why I love the Bible. I love reading it in the Spirit. This is not, you know, when I read the Bible, it's not an academic exercise. You know, theologians, unless they're born again, academics, unless they're born again, they cannot correctly understand the Word of God. Let me just, just emphasize that. Don't you won't find life in those things. In fact, the Bible is all about Jesus. So John 5:39, Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees. He was speaking to a bunch of guys who knew the scriptures backwards. Okay, and when I say the scriptures, it was talking about the old covenant because that's the only one they had at that time. But they knew them backwards. They knew all the principles, the rules, the regulations. But they could not recognize the Messiah, Jesus. And Jesus in John 5, 39, he says, You diligently search the scriptures and study the scriptures, thinking that they're going to bring you life. But they're actually about me. And then Jesus went on elsewhere to say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. So guys, you can be an academic. You can know the Bible backwards. But you can totally miss the spirit behind it, which is, Pointing to Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. So the scriptures themselves, the Bible itself cannot bring you life, but it reveals the one who brings life, which is Jesus. So when we're using the sword of the spirit in spiritual warfare as the armor of God, we use it. We, we take the scriptures, we read them and say, how is this pointing to Jesus? How is this revealing Christ? How is it revealing the Savior and the Messiah? Okay, the, the, the Spirit and the Bible always point to Jesus. They always point to the finished work of the cross, the good news <laughs> that God is good, the good news of the new covenant. Even the Old Testament was shadows and types. Okay, it was hidden. In the Old Testament is Christ concealed. In the New Testament, it's Christ revealed. So even the Old Testament, it's not a whole load of rules, regulations, and it's not a history. It's a love story about Jesus. It's his story, history, his story. You've heard that before. Okay, it's pointing us to Jesus. We are not called to be dependent on the Bible. We are called to be dependent on Jesus. Not Bible dependent, Jesus dependent. The Bible points to Jesus. The Bible reveals Jesus. Jesus is the word. He is the sword. True Bible reading puts the emphasis on Jesus, on his grace and the finished work of the, of the cross. It doesn't put the emphasis on us and what we should be doing. You see, so it's the emphasis that we need to read the scriptures with is what is it saying about Jesus? Not about what we should be doing, but what about he has done on the cross. So 1 Corinthians 1.30 says... He, Jesus, has become for us our righteousness, our right standing with God, our holiness, our separation unto God, and our redemption. That means we've been purchased for God. Jesus has done that. Nothing we can do has any effect on that. It's when we believe in Jesus. So the Bible is about God's love story, about Jesus. It's about Jesus overcoming for our sake. 
and Jesus be in the word of God. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the, uh, of, of the devil. So when the devil comes to you and says, Ha, Gary, you're not good enough. You're not holy enough. You're not righteous enough. I say, don't look at me. <laughs> look at Jesus. And I literally take the word of God, Galatians 2.20, one of my favorite ones. And it said, I, devil, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. <laughs> but Christ lives in me. And the life I live in this body is by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and died for me. I don't set aside the grace of God. For if my right standing with God could be attained through keeping of rules, laws and regulation, Christ died for nothing. So stop looking at me. <laughs> Look to Jesus. He's the answer to my holiness, my righteousness and my redemption. Okay, so principle number one or fact number one is the Bible is about Christ. Point number two. <laughs> and by the way, guys. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, now's the time. <laughs> it's a free gift of grace. You're saved by grace through faith and not by any of your works. So if the devil's been telling you you're not good enough to come to God, he's right. You're not. <laughs> That's the good news. No one is righteous. Not one of us. Everybody can only come to Christ by grace. And if that's you today, can quite simply pray a prayer and say, Jesus, I may not understand all this stuff, but come into my life as Lord and Savior. I repent of my old way of thinking, of my old way of believing, and I choose you today. <laughs> and if that's you, if that's you today, let me know. I always want to give people the chance to be saved. Okay, and then when you pray that prayer, it will be the start of, that Jesus will start coming into your life to have a relationship with you. It's good news. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not preaching a big evangelistic teaching now, but I'm just giving people the opportunity. Repent, that means change your mind and turn to Jesus. And if you're not feeling good enough, if you're not feeling holy enough, if you're not feeling righteous enough, good place to be. Let Jesus do it for you. So the second point is when we read the scriptures and when we wield the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, it's pointing to the cross. Our focus needs to be on Christ and it needs to be on the cross. So the sword of the Spirit is about the cross, what Jesus did for us on the cross. And this is something we need to constantly go back to and correctly discern that we see Jesus on the cross bearing our sins. So 2 Corinthians 5, 21, one of my favorite scriptures. I've got lots of favorite scriptures. <laughs> it says that he who knew no sin, Jesus who knew no sin, became sin for our sake, that we should become the righteousness of God. <laughs> That's amazing. And it relates directly to John 3.15, where it says, just as a snake was lifted up in a, a pole, on a pole at Moses' time, so the Son of God must be lifted up. You see, he became like a snake. He actually became sin. That's what killed him. The wages of sin is death. Jesus died on the cross because of sin. He bore your sins, he bore my sins in his body on the tree. So that we should no longer be slaves to sin. We should no longer be under the dominion of sin. We can say no to sin. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Don't let the devil tell you you're a slave. If you're born again, spirit-filled Christian, you are not a slave to sin. Jesus, the Lamb of God, John 1, 29. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. <laughs> See, my sins and your sins, if you're in Christ, are forgiven past, present, and future. We, are no, long, we no longer relate to God on the basis of sin or sinlessness. We now relate to Him in Christ. So the Lamb of God, Jesus, took away our sins. And we, Romans 6, 14 says... Sin shall no longer have dominion, no longer master us, because we're not under that old covenant law, but we're under God's grace. And Romans 6, 1 says, well, shall we go on sinning because we're under grace? Because let me tell you something, the minute you preach grace, a whole load of religious people out there, suddenly like, oh, you're preaching licentious, you're preaching abandonment to sin. No, I'm not. It actually... Titus 2.12 says it is sin, 
sorry, that is overcome, sin is overcome or lusts are overcome by grace. By understanding God's grace has set us free. We're no longer saved. So do not take anything I say as permission to go on sinning. But what I'm saying is we have freedom from sin in Christ. So God looks at our hearts. See, once you're in Christ, you no longer willingly desire to go on sinning. Yes, we might sin. We might get it wrong. But grace covers that. But we no longer desire to go out and sin. So the cross takes away our sin, brings us into a place of forgiveness. We are forgiven. Sins are forgiven. Romans 4, 7 to 8. Lovely to read. Our sins are forgiven and no longer accounted to us under the new covenant. Wow, that's good news. <laughs> See, there's a fulfillment of Psalm 32. Jesus has done it. Jesus has broken the power of sin. I can overcome. I can say no to sin. So the other big one I want to talk about. Point number three is we need to, under, when we use and read the scriptures, we need to look at the covenant that we're reading from. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see Christians making. They read the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and they think it applies to them. And let me just, let me just explain that. God is a God who relates on covenants. He re he's a God of relationship. He makes agreements, blood covenants, in fact. And, and the, the typical covenant is a covenant of marriage between, between two people. It talks about it at Ephesians 5.32. It talks about marriage. And he says, I'm talking about Christ and the church. See, God relates to us in covenants. The bride and the bridegroom. He says, he says the bride is the church. That's us, the people of God. And the bridegroom is Jesus. It's a covenant relationship. God wants intimacy. He wants us to, to, know, to know him intimately, to, to be part of his life and our life. So God is a, relation, a relational God. And he relates in covenants. And he makes his covenants clear. And there are two main covenants. There's many covenants in the Bible. There are two main. There's the old covenant, which is the old Jewish scriptures, and the new covenant. Okay, which was revealed by the Holy Spirit to the apostles. The new covenant, let me just say, we, if you are born again Christian, you are in the new covenant. And the new covenant started after the cross. Even Jesus preached some old covenant stuff because he preached to the Jews who were still under the old covenant of the law. But the new covenant starts from the time of the cross. It's a progressive revelation of God's grace, of God's forgiveness, and the Holy Spirit's coming and power. Progressive revelation. Up to the time of the cross, our sins were not atoned for. And we were still under the law of sin and death. From the cross onwards, Jesus atoned for our sins. And we are now in this new covenant, which is the grace of God has implemented by the Holy Spirit. So remember, we are new covenant people. When we use the scriptures, we use them in the new covenant sense that they point to Jesus, they point to the cross, and they point to the new covenant. Okay? Very, very important because I see people reading out of the old covenant and applying it to themselves, and it just brings death and condemnation. If you don't believe me, read 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It says the law that was written on stone brings death and condemnation. You see, the purpose of the law is not to make us right with God. It's not for us to live by. It's, it's to bring about a consciousness of sin, a consciousness that we need to be saved. So Romans 3.20, it says that the law can never make someone right with God. It's through the law that we become conscious that we are sinners and we need to be saved. <laughs> you know, this a lot. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna save the rest till next week, or maybe later on in in the week I'll post another point, uh, another um, section of this about the covenants. I'm gonna speak then about context and consciousness, because you know this wielding of the sword of the spirit is very important, and we need to understand 
that we are new covenant people in the blood of Jesus. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Luke 22, 20. Which was a fulfillment of Jeremiah 33, 31. Where he says a new covenant is coming. See, we are under a new agreement in the blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you, when you understand this, it's so powerful. The devil hates the new covenant. He loves the old covenant because the old covenant points to your failure. And if, you, if you're if not saved, the new covenant can set you free. The old covenant just brings you into condemnation, guilt, and shame, and uselessness. Israel found that out. Read Romans 10 to 12. It talks about how Israel tried to get right with God through the keeping of the law, through obedience, through works, and they failed all the time. <laughs> the good news is you don't have to fail. You just got to say, Jesus is my savior. So once again, guys, I want to ask you to share this video. I want to ask you to apply it into your life. Put some comments in, in, in the bottom of this, uh, uh, in these comments section of this YouTube. Let's share this good news. If you like this, please click on the uh, share button on the bottom right, the red button on the bottom right hand side of the corner. Also turn on the little notifications bell so you get notifications when I share again. I'm probably going to try to share something more on Monday. So this week we're going to have two um, sections to bring you into full understanding how to wield the Word of God as a sword. And I think also that I will set this up as a whole teaching on correct use of the Bible probably a whole series um a whole playlist so bless you please share your testimonies share the good news remember you are righteous remember you are children of god you are loved remember the joy of the lord is your strength remember the power of the spirit lives in you because you've been sealed with the holy spirit <laughs> it's such good news you know just the joy of the lord just bubbles up in me just sharing this good news so love to you, blessings be unto you. Remember from the fullness of grace comes blessing upon blessing in Christ Jesus. It's free and it's good news.